All right, so the lure in my hand right here I think is incredibly underrated no matter where you fish for bass, from the bank, from the kayak, or from the deck of a bass boat. What is this lure in my hand? Why, it's literally a simple soft plastic worm. Well, hold up now though, that's not a worm, buddy, that's a jig. I mean, no, this is technically a worm. No, 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 if, if we're getting technical here, the thing you're holding right there? Yeah, this worm. Yeah, this worm, no. That's a jig. It's literally a worm. It's a jig. It's a worm. Jig. Worm. Jig. Worm. Oh, a jig worm. Is that what this is? A jig worm? Well, if it is, what the heck is this thing? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant. Another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! Wait, it's a, it's a jig worm? Okay. I guess so. Hey, welcome back to TRF. My goal right here on this channel is to help you guys become better anglers and catch more fish, no matter if you're a bass boat angler or a bank angler. So if you're all about that, hit the subscribe button. So I've made a video on the jig worm before, but it's been a long time and I thought, you know what? It's about time that we do a refresher because this thing is an underrated lure that catches fish all over. This video is brought to you by Outcast Tackle, the company that makes the jig head that you see right here on the jig worm. I have worked with Outcast Tackle over the past four years and they have some of the best skipping jigs, flipping jigs, hair jigs, swim jigs, any kind of jig you want, Outcast has you covered. If you're on a budget, the Juice Jig is a fantastic lead jig that can be fished practically anywhere. It has tons of different colors. And if you want a premium jig, the Stealth or Cage Fighters are a tungsten jig. And let me tell you, they are fantastic. If you want to check out some of my favorite Outcast jigs, I will leave them linked in the video description below. Please purchase your tackle through those links. Whether or not you buy the products I talk about, those links are affiliate links and will help this channel keep going forward. So what the heck is the jig worm? Well, it's, as the name implies, a mixture between a jig head and a worm, and that's it. Now, when pairing the jig head and the worm together, you can use practically whatever four to seven inch worm you want, whether it's a curly tail, whether it's a straight tail, a shaky head worm, a five inch Senko, you can use all different kinds of worms in all different kinds of colors. But to me, the jig head has to be one that's either the, the exact one I have here or one very similar because the jig head itself adds a certain action that a normal shaky head jig head, for example, cannot match. My two favorite worms to put on this jig head are a six inch Strike King Fat Baby Finesse Worm and a five inch Strike King Ocho. I think both of those work kind of interchangeably. I don't think one's better than the other. It's just kind of whatever I have on hand. But the one thing that differentiates the jig worm from a shaky head, even though they kind of look similar in profile, is that, as you can see there on the screen, the hook is actually exposed. And this is meant to be thrown around aquatic vegetation which doesn't make any sense inherently. And that's honestly why I think a lot of people, especially down south, don't throw this lure because it doesn't make any sense for grass fishing. But the biggest reason why this thing works so well around grass is because the exact hook size here and the weight, I throw 1 8 ounce and I think it's a 2 aught hook, it pops out of grass so perfectly. And the second it pops out of that grass, you rip it out, it triggers a reaction strike and a fish cannot help but to eat this thing. I've caught fish on the jig worm in tons of different states from the north to the south, it catches fish everywhere. Now before we talk about what makes this jig head so special, let's rig it up real quick. All you do is take your jig head like this and find where it's going to poke out if you were to rig it all the way on that worm, which is right about that rib right there. And then I thread it down just like you do a jig trailer. So thread it just like this, poke it on out right in the center, and then you thread it on there as straight as you possibly can. Then once you get it all the way up on there, you pinch it on the little bait keeper and you got yourself a jig worm. Now going back into the wear for a second, I did mention that it's supposed to be thrown around aquatic vegetation, but the type of aquatic vegetation, the type of grass really, really matters. And the biggest thing about it is that you need grass that is crisp. Just like fishing a lipless crankbait around grass, you need good, healthy vegetation to be able to snap the jig worm out of the grass because with the exposed hook, it's going to get a little bit stuck on every single cast. And if your grass is not healthy, your jig worm is not going to be able to pop out of that grass. You're going to try your hardest to rip that jig worm out of the grass only to find that you have to reel it back in and get the nasty grass off. Now while the species of grass that you fish it around doesn't necessarily matter as much as the health of the grass, there are ones that are better than others and the two that are my favorite for fishing the jig worm are milfoil, I guess three, milfoil, coontail, and cabbage. I know that not every body of water is going to have one or all three of those types of vegetations, but if you have good crisp grass, especially those three, the jig worm is a good lure to throw. So let's switch gears real quick and talk about the fishing equipment you need to throw the jig worm effectively and catch fish on it. What rod, reel, and line do you need? 
Well, the good news is you don't really need anything to effectively catch fish on a jig worm. A lot of guys throw it on a spinning rod and a few guys throw it on a bait caster. I am in the weird category of people that like to throw it on a bait caster, but I also throw it on 10 to 12 pound fluorocarbon line straight from the bait caster. And then I use a 7.2 uh, TP1 black loose medium action rod. That way I have a good soft tip to launch that bait out there and be able to feel it down there because with the spinning rod, you have a much softer tip on that rod and you can really feel if the bait as light as it is. Being a 1 8 ounce, you can really feel it well with the spinning rod, but I just prefer the casting distance and accuracy I get with a bait caster and the fact that it's medium is good enough for me. So let's move on to the how or the retrieve on the jig worm. It is pretty dang simple. You make as long of a cast as you can to a grass clump, a grass edge, a grass line, a weed flat, and you let it sink all the way to the bottom, probably getting stuck somewhat in the grass down there, and then you lift up and let it sink back down, just like your standard soft plastic Texas rig worm. But when you get stuck on some grass, you'll feel it down there. You're gonna grab your handle and give your rod a quick snap. And that should free the jig worm from the grass, allowing it to fall back down. Now, one of the cool things about the jig worm, like I said, I'm gonna talk about the head specifically, is that the Outcast Tackle Money Jig Head has a kind of like a flat head on the bottom side of it. And no, that doesn't allow the jig head to make the jig worm stand up like a shaky head. That shape actually causes this bait right here to spiral as it falls down, almost like a tube. And let me tell you, a bass cannot resist the combination of a jig worm being snapped out of the grass and then spiraling back down right into his face. Now, one last thing that you've probably been thinking about the whole time is why are you throwing a chartreuse head. I don't know the science behind it, but all I know is that almost everywhere I go, a chartreuse head catches them better than a green pumpkin or a black. And I can't say the same about shaky heads. Most of the time, green pumpkin, black, or unpainted shaky heads are my favorite. I don't know if it's just a confidence thing for me, but I do know the chartreuse gets bites and Outcast Tackle sells the most of any color in chartreuse. So maybe pick up a pack of chartreuse and green pumpkin and give it a try for yourself in your pond or lake. Now, you know what? The last thing I'm going to talk to you guys about before we show some awesome fish catches is the hook set with the jig worm and the fact that you really don't need a heavy hook set. The money jig has a very, very sticky, sharp hook. It is a thin wire. And so for me, any hook set on the lighter side is going to do just fine to catch fish on the jig worm. So enough chit chat and let's go on the water and see some awesome jig worm fish catches. Uh Oh, you trying to bath? I'm spot locking us. Is this, is this feels more grande, but I probably have some grass as well. No. A little more grande. Come on now. Come on now, get up in here. Yes, sir. Boom, look at that chunk of a bass right there on the jig worm. I think the chartreuse helped him find it in this wavy, windy water. Beautiful. What a healthy fish. Get out of the grass. Dude. If you come near the trolling motor, I'm, I'm turning off spot lock. Was that a bass? I think it's a bass. It could be a walleye, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, wow, holy cow, that's an absolute chunk. And I don't know if y'all will even be able to see this on that camera, but it's, it's G-O-N-E gone. Wow, I'm gonna get you some pliers here. He ain't got a little jig worm all gone, didn't he? Yeah, I'm gonna pull your worm off. <laughs> Gee, now he makes four pounders look small because he's, what are you, six, nine? Six, five? Sorry, sorry to disappoint. Okay, he's six, five. On the jiggy worm. Hey. There's one. It does not feel as big as yours. And it's not as big as yours. I think it's a spinner. Oh, look at the chunky belly on this rock bass. <laughs> My goodness. That's a big boy. Like that. Gee. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That one feels, it's not that big, but it's just fighting really stinking hard. My gosh. Why are you fighting so hard when you're not that big? Where are you there? Oh, you're nicer. You're a nicer fish. You're a nicer fish. Clink. Jig worm, two and a half pounder. See ya. And uh, swing head. Oh, gosh dang. We got some big mama head shakes happening, Mr. Connor. We do, but it could just be a regular mama. Or is it a walleye? I have no idea. I feel like a pike would have jumped by now. Oh, it's fast. No? 
I don't know what it is. It's a walleye. Really? Pretty big one. What do I do? Grab it. I don't know how to grab a walleye. Oh, I'll show you. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Grab them by the lip, right? Yeah, just lip them. <laughs> well, folks at home, look at this. A walleye. Is that too big to eat or is that an eater? Not that I'm going to keep it, but. That's pretty big. Heck yeah. Thank you, Mr. Walleye. See ya. Well. On the fall. Uh-oh. I think it's another big walleye. No, they're really? bass. It's a bass? Okay, cool. They're up there. <laughs> oh, I love a big head shake. I love a big head. Oh, let's go. See, this girl's so tubby. She tried to jump, but she can't. Oh, boom. Gotta love it. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Boop. Four species jigworm day today. Bass. Grand What's the grand slam? I don't know. Just add one more species to the Okay. What's that? Smallmouth. A smallmouth. We did it. <laughs> we got the grand slam. Wow. <laughs> Smallmouth. Today on this jigworm alone, we have caught a largemouth, a walleye, a crappie, a rock bass, and now a smallmouth. That's pretty cool. Well, boys and girls, that's gonna be the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, hit that subscribe button because I'd love to have you guys around the channel. If you wanna see another worm video, but this time not a small worm, a giant worm instructional video, I will leave that masterclass linked right up here in this corner for you guys to watch. The longer you stay on my channel, the better it does in the YouTube algorithm. We'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.